Hi, this is Mark Galliotti with another take on current Russian politics. Now, at the moment, we have a sudden bout of speculation about who will succeed Putin. Um, we've had the Minchenko Group's Politburo 2.0 report and, and, and others are coming out. And just more generally, there is quite a bit of discussion in the Russian press about this topic. And this, this fits into a pattern that I'd experienced myself when I was in Moscow in, in spring, in which I was surprised at how openly people were talking about that. Not that anyone doubts that Putin is going to stand in next year's presidential elections and win, but there is that sense that basically the Putin regime is running down and therefore think people are thinking about the future. And I think this matters a lot, and this matters a lot particularly because when it comes down to it, politics is not about institutions and structures and wiring diagrams of power. It is really about control over the imagination. It's about actually persuading people to obey you, to support you, to woo you, and generally that you are the power. And as soon as people start thinking about life beyond Putin, actually that eats into a key element of his own legitimacy, which was that he was in effect the irreplaceable man. They're already thinking who can replace the irreplaceable man. And although therefore I, I don't think we're going to see any challenges to Putin or whatever, nonetheless I think it has five interesting impacts that are just worth briefly dwelling on at this point. First of all, we can expect the start of manoeuvres as people begin to prepare their own personal power bases if they're thinking about some kind of a presidential move. I still have a sneaking suspicion that this may be at least part of the reason behind Moscow Mayor Sobyanin's massive redevelopment project of the city. Um, in part, it's, it's exactly what it seems to be. But also, it's, you know, this is a chance to basically support and uh, enrich people who are nice to you. And also because a lot of the uh, companies that are getting these contracts are fairly non-transparent in their ownership, it may well also be Sobyanin building up his own economic power base, because that matters. On the other hand, and this is the second factor, it may well encourage members of the elite who don't think they're necessarily going to have a future after Putin to basically build up the resources now while they can. I wouldn't be surprised if we see an acceleration of the kleptocratic embezzlement of resources. That could be behind uh, Sobyanin's thinking. I doubt it somehow. But on the other hand, it might well be a factor behind the increasingly aggressive moves of um, Igor Sechin, um, the head of Rosneft, the sort of gas giant, um, petrol giant, um, who is essentially at the moment looking to sort of take whatever he can into his own empire. Sechin is not in many ways a popular man um, amongst the elite, and therefore it might well be that he's thinking that actually steal as much as you can while you can. Of course, the third option is people start to woo the boss all the more assiduously, hoping precisely to actually get Putin's blessing for them to be his anointed successor, because it almost certainly he will, if as and when some kind of manic succession take place, precisely want to have some trusted person. Um, interestingly enough, 7th of October is Putin's next birthday. It'll be interesting to see if, if we start beginning to see competitive um, accolades being given. Conversely, the fourth possible route is actually we might increasingly see the marginalisation of the boss. I mean, this is something that actually is one of the reasons why, as he was getting close to his death, not that he knew it, um, Stalin was preparing for a new round of purges is because he realised that the elite, an elite that originally he had built to be so focused around himself and his own personal sort of interests, was actually increasingly talking amongst itself and not constantly referring to Comrade Stalin. Well, you know, we might see this, and again, actually, one could point to, for example, um, the arrest of Minister Ulukaev, essentially as part of a sting orchestrated by Sechin. Um, as being a potential case of something that actually had nothing really to do with Putin. It was purely about rivalries and um, grudges being prosecuted within the elite, within the elite that feel, felt that it now had the capacity to do so. So we'll actually see if it might well be that, in fact, Putin will begin to become more and more deferred to in word, but marginalised in deed. Fifth option, and this is one of the reasons why I think um, at the moment a lot of these discussions about Putin's successor keep coming down to Dmitry Medvedev, the current Prime Minister, and in many ways one of the weakest reeds in, 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 in the whole sort of government, who has, if nothing else, also had his brand very heavily tarnished and very effectively by Alexei Navalny, his corruption. But nonetheless, in some ways, ironically enough, his very weakness might be his greatest strength. 
if in fact you end up with a situation in which actually a coalition of powerful, hungry, and mutually suspicious figures within the government do not feel that they can allow any one of their own to get the key job, it may well lead to their want a weak president who will essentially be a consensus broker and a figurehead and a spokesman for that oligarchic elite. So this actually might be, um, in some ways, not just Dmitry Medvedev's last stand, but also his last laugh, um, having briefly been president for, for one term, but frankly a, an emasculated sock puppet president. Um, with, with Putin absolutely in, in charge, it might well be that he, he'll, he'll now be Putin's successor in, 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 in reality, even if at the price of definitely being, again, a sock puppet for many other people instead. So we'll see. I think these, these are five interesting processes that, that, that we might well see playing out if we continue to get this sense that the Russian elite are thinking beyond Putin. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.